Welcome everyone to this essential guide on the flight guidance system and flight mode enunciator of the Embraer 145. In this video, we'll cover the basics that are crucial for aspiring airline pilots. First, let's define what the flight guidance system is. Let's keep it nice and simple. The flight guidance system provides automated flight control, which assists the pilots manage the aircraft's trajectory. It includes components like the autopilot and flight director, which enhances flight safety, efficiency, and reduces the pilot's workload. The flight mode enunciator, or FMA, displays the current state and mode of the flight guidance system. Located on the PFD, the FMA provides real-time feedback to pilots on the active flight modes. Now let's discuss the different modes of the flight guidance system, starting with vertical modes. ALT, or altitude hold, maintains a specific altitude. VS, vertical speed, maintains a specific vertical speed. Flight level change, FLC, maintains a specific airspeed or VS mode during climbs and descents respectfully. The lateral modes include heading, which maintains a specific heading. Nav, follows the flight plan when flying an LNAV or a radial when in nav mode. And then approach, engages approach mode for the ILS approach and landing. To try and understand the flight guidance system, understand that it is split into two separate components, the flight guidance system itself and the flight mode enunciator. I'm going to select heading mode, but before I do that, I'm going to sync the heading bug and select heading. If I turn now onto particular heading, as an example, let's turn onto a heading of 120 degrees, the aircraft will roll to the right onto that heading because I'm in heading mode. You've got on the extreme left and extreme right, flight director on and off. So flight director one on the left, and I can select it on and off. Flight director two on the right can be selected on and off. You've also got your course bar. The course bar is used to intercept the radial. We have it set up to intercept the radial or for the final approach course onto the ILS. They're independent. The next little segment are all the lateral modes. You've got heading, nav, approach, and bank. The next segment is all to do with the autopilot. Autopilot on and off, the couple switch to the left or the right hand side, and the yaw damper on and off. The next segment are all the vertical modes, speed, flight level change, and VS. Speed and flight uh, and vertical speed use the same knob to increase or decrease the speed or the vertical speed. The next segment is to do with altitude and altitude hold and altitude pre-selecting. With a bit of experience using the flight guidance system, switching between various modes will become second nature. Operating the flight guidance system involves knowing how to engage and disengage the autopilot and flight director, selecting and activating vertical and lateral modes, and continuously monitoring the FMA for mode awareness. The indications are color-coded for improved situational awareness. Green indicates active modes, white indicates armed modes. Active modes take precedence over arm modes. Anticipate mode changes in advance and be proactive. Always monitor and check the FMA to ensure the correct modes are engaged. Always verify mode selections with your pilot monitoring to avoid any errors. Try avoid these common mistakes. Ensure you understand the active and arm modes and what they do prior to starting your simulator training and don't rely solely on automation. Okay, so I actually flew this ILS approach in the simulator yesterday to try and demonstrate this. An ILS is a nice uh, demonstration because there's quite a few mode changes between the armed and active modes. So let's have a look at what's going on here. I've got heading and indicated airspeed as active modes at the moment. The autopilot and your damper is on, coupled to the left-hand side. And as you can see, I'm busy turning on to a heading of 040 degrees, and I'm descending to 2,000 feet. So I've got 2,000 feet set in the altitude window, and the aircraft now 2,400 feet. So let's play it through and see what happens. 
There you see I've armed the approach. I've got localizer and glide slope in white and Azel is in white as well. The radio altimeter has become alive. Azel goes green. I've now captured the 2,000 feet altitude. I'm waiting now for altitude alt to be displayed in green. Aircraft now leveling off at 2,000 feet. Of course, although this is a video on the flight guidance system, we're always monitoring the aircraft. We're never just relying solely that the plane will do it all for us. But there you have it. There's alt green, and at the same time, localizer goes green, meaning we've captured the localizer. The aircraft starts to roll onto that uh, localizer, and I've asked the pilot monitoring to set runway heading. So there you have it. We've got uh, localizer green, alt green, and the glide slope is now armed. We're waiting for the glide slope to become alive, and there it is. The glide slope is alive. So the next thing I am expecting is for glide slope to go green. That's one and a half dots on the glide slope. At this stage, you would be configuring gear down, flap 22, 140 knots. You can see there I've started to reduce the thrust, and because of the Extra flap setting, the aircraft is slowing down, and we are now waiting for that glide slope to go green. There you have it. There's glide slope green, and I've asked the pilot monitoring to set missed approach altitude of 6,500 feet. So there's a nice visualization of what you can expect on an ILS. We're flying this ILS approach as accurately as possible. And I actually demonstrate a go around here for you as well, just so that you can see the mode changes that occur during a go around. There I've clicked the toga buttons. You can see the flight director raises to 10 degrees nose up. I've got roll and go around indicated on the FMA. Azel goes white again. And we're climbing now to our missed approach altitude of 6,500 feet. And of course, on the 145, you can do a go around with the autopilot engaged. As I mentioned earlier, you're always monitoring the air aircraft trajectory. Although you have fancy automation and very nice instrumentation, you always double check and monitor the aircraft at all times. In summary, mastering the flight guidance system and FMA is crucial for safe and efficient flights. Practice regularly, stay vigilant, and remain proactive. Pilots,